Well, hello, everybody. It's wonderful to have you with us. I pray wherever you are that you know that God is with you exactly in the place where you are. Can I just say thank you to everybody who either called me, emailed me or made a comment in relation to yesterday's daily devotional. I'm very grateful uh, that you did. And I hear your prayers and your support. Thank you very much. Well, we are in this series called Living in Victory. Living in Victory because of what Jesus has done for us. And these daily devotionals are all about our prayer life, our walk with God. I spoke to a gentleman yesterday who said to me his whole life that he had been raised Catholic. He was doing all of the Catholic practices and things that we do. And yet he discovered by listening to the daily devotionals, and many people have said this to me, that we are called to a deeper relationship, a personal relationship with God. That's it. That's exactly what the daily devotionals are about. It's about our relationship with God and growing in a deeper love of God. Well, from time to time, people ask the question, should they be hanging out with people who maybe are not Christian or people whose behavior and lifestyle is contrary to the gospel? Who in the olden days we might have called sinners, not that we use that term today. Some people ask me sometimes why I hang out with some of the people that I do that are not Christian people. And the truth is, the reason I do is because I'm a Christian. The reason I do is because I am a conqueror. I'm living in victory and we are called to live in victory. We don't have to be frightened by what others are doing when we have the power of God alive in us. Have a look at this. Let's have a look at Matthew's Gospel, chapter 9, starting at verse 9. And it says this, As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher, why does Jesus, eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard this, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. Jesus was challenged by people as to why he spent time with tax collectors, these people who were deemed to be doing the wrong thing, and sinners, people who were in breach of the law. And Jesus is very clear. He comes along and he says, go and, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. See, sometimes we can keep all of the rules and within our heart we can be dark toward God, toward people. See, when we're victorious, we're called to allow the power of God that resides within us to have effect upon the people around us. In our modern world, there are many times when we can't walk around and talk about Jesus. We can't. In our places of work, in in some of the places where we socialize, we can't. But we, we need to know that we carry the presence of God within us because we are victorious in him who have given our lives to him. We have the opportunity to be that person of faith in environments and to change the atmosphere, to change the spiritual atmosphere of the environments we're in because we have Christ in us. Now, we can stop and say to ourselves, why do some of us believe and others don't? I've sometimes looked at in my extended family. Why do some of my family members have faith and others don't? The truth is, I don't know. I don't know and I don't think we know. I I sometimes think to myself, how come God blessed me with faith? How come I have been graced with it? And some people might simplistically, and it would be simplistic, to say, well, you've you've just done the right thing. You know, but but what was it within me that allowed me to do that? It was God. And so we stop and we can say, well, does that mean that the person who's not acting in a righteous manner, that somehow God hasn't worked in their life? The truth is we don't know. What we do know is that God's love is equal across us all. God's love to me, God's love for me is not greater because I'm responding to him than the person who says, I don't believe in God. The person who comes along and does hideous and wrong things. God is not coming and saying, well, I love you more, Bruce, than I love that person. No, 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 that's not the way it works. 
God's love is equal. And what we're called to be is to be light in those environments. And so we're called to have mercy, to have understanding, to be able to submit to that which we don't know. And that's why to our spouses that some of us are married to who don't have faith, we have the chance to be the faith person in that environment, to live victorious in that environment. To some of us have, have children who have gone off in directions and values and living in ways that we don't agree, we have the chance to be the God person, the faith person in those environments. The truth is, for all of us who are Christians, we are called to be with people who the Bible calls, we don't call them this today, but to be with the person who is the sinner, the person who is doing the wrong thing. Now, the truth is we have to be smart. We, we be smart. If you're someone who has a gambling problem, then deciding that I'm going to go and minister to people who have gambling problems may not be the wisest thing to do. The church in its, in, in its wisdom tells us that we should avoid the occasion of sin, of putting ourselves in the place where we might be tempted. We need to do that. Maybe that's not what we should call to. If we're someone who's, who's had a problem with prostitution in our life or prostitutes in our life, then deciding to go and become involved in ministry to prostitutes when we experience temptation in that area of our life, that may not be the place that we should be. But being with people that are in breach of what God wants us to be is where we should be. We, we, where we should be. Jesus was very clear. What did, what did he say? For I've come to call not the righteous, but sinners. In Matthew chapter 2, uh, verse 17, it says this. Verse 17, it says this. Uh, when Jesus heard this, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. And I've come to call not the righteous, but sinners. In Luke chapter 5, verse 31, it says, And Jesus answered, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I've come uh, to call not the righteous, but sinners to repentance. You and I need to make sure that we are living our lives in the victory of Christ. Just because we're with people doing the wrong thing doesn't mean we have to do the wrong thing. See, we are victorious in Christ. We have the grace of Christ within us. And so in your prayer today, pray about are you living in victory or are you living in fear? Are you living in victory or are you living in judgment of others? Look at the way they live. Are you living in victory or are you living thinking to yourself, you know, I shouldn't have anything to do with those people because I am pure. That, that's, that's, a, that's a difficult place to be. Jesus looked down on that point of view. Hey, you know, I know it's, it's tough, but it's also freeing to live the way God calls us to live. Well, as we conclude today, and from time to time I ask if you will help me in proclaiming the gospel. There are many people who have been writing to me telling me about how they have come to a faith in Jesus. Many people have been saying that it, these daily devotionals and our television programs have woken people up to faith. And we are desperate in our world today for people to find faith and to find Jesus. I want to say thank you to all of you because you are changing the lives of people. Yes, they may write to me, but in the, in the scriptures, the scriptures are clear that we are a spiritual body and that you and I together, you and I together are experiencing the presence of God and, and you and I together are partnering to change people's lives. The world is desperate for God. The world is desperate for God in our day. And if you and I will not go, if you and I will not respond, who will? And together, we can use our gifts, our talents, our resources to do so. As so I am unashamed, people sometimes say to me, aren't you ashamed to ask? No, 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 I'm very happy to be a beggar for Jesus. I'm very happy to be someone who comes along and says, will you help someone come to Jesus to save their life, to save their marriage, to bring them to faith, to be a better parent, to experience the freedom of the gospel? To all of our Faith Builder partners, the people who give every month, whether you're giving $50 or $100 or $1,000, whatever you're giving, I just want to say to you, you are making a difference in the lives of so many people around the world. To those who give from time to time, I want to say thank you to you. I can't do this without you. And I'm asking, would you help me to bring Jesus into the lives of people so that they would know that they are people who can live in the victory of Easter? which is what you're doing right now.
Loving God, I thank you today that you love us. Allow us, Lord God, to live victorious, to not be frightened of the person who's doing the wrong thing, but to know we're stronger because of you within us that we're not judgmental because we know that we ourselves are sinners and that we need you. Lord God, allow us to share the gospel with more, put on our hearts to reach even more, to bring freedom even more to people into people's lives. And Father, we ask this in the name of Jesus, through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey, God bless you all, everybody. See you tomorrow. And don't forget, wherever you are, God is never far from you.